Damn. And I thought I had some bad days at work. So the Belco experiment tells the story of a group of 80 employees in this tower office building who are locked in and suddenly forced to murder each other in order to survive. This movie was actually written by James Gunn, the director of Slither and Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and Volume 2, but he chose not to direct this movie because while he wrote the script, at the time of his life he had a lot of really personal issues regarding his family and he didn't feel like portraying the story of people forced to make moral decisions on who to kill and forcing themselves to murder their family and their friends around them was the best thing that he should be doing at the time. So the directing duties to this went over to Greg McLean and this movie has sat in development since 2015. It's actually sat on the shelf for two years waiting for distribution. Right from the get-go, you know this movie was made for genre fans just because of the cast. You got genre cast galore in this movie. You got Tony Goldwyn, that ageless bastard is in this. You got John Gallagher Jr., who was just most recently in 10 Cloverfield Lane. You got John McGinley, who's always this really creepy, slimy character, and he <laughs> definitely has that character as well in the Belko Experiment. And you got one of my favorite character actors, Michael Rooker. Now, when I walked into the Belko Experiment, I I wasn't expecting a real serious story. I wasn't expecting too many dramatic moments. I went to go see some gore, some carnage, some genre fun. And did I get that? No. Now before I get into why, I will say a few things that I did like about the Belko Experiment. I think the movie started really strong. It starts fast. It gets you right into the story. It doesn't really mess around a whole lot. It introduces you to the office space comedy type culture that's in the office in this Belko building. And then it gets right into the carnage with the voice coming over the speaker, telling them that people are going to die, and then you're on this ride for the movie. In two minutes, we want 30 of you dead. If 30 of you are not dead, we will end 60 of your lives ourselves. I also think most of the cast did pretty well at portraying the characters that they were told to portray. Tony Goldwyn is a really good character. In less than 20 minutes, they are going to kill 60 of the people in this room. So we need order. John McGinley is a really good creepy slimy character. I feel like that character is just written for that guy every time he's in a movie. There's a couple of really cool gory kills in this. They're not really all that inventive, but they did pull off the gore pretty well on the few times that they went for it. And the movie doesn't really overstay its welcome. It's not even 90 minutes long. It gets in, it gives you its story, and it gets out, and that does work to this movie's advantage. This should not be a two-hour movie, and it's not. Now, as far as the negatives in the Belco experiment, this movie is clearly trying to be some kind of a mix between Office Space and Battle Royale, and I don't feel like either of those two styles of this movie is done to its full potential. The comedy doesn't quite land in the way that they want it to land, and the gore and the carnage and the genre part of it doesn't land in the way that they want it to land. They feel like half measures on both both sides. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that James Gunn himself did not direct this movie. Greg McLean is the director of this. He's the one that did both the Wolf Creek movies. And he's not nearly as strong as a director as James Gunn. And I feel like James Gunn would have taken this movie to the extremes and to the levels that we wanted it in the way that he intended when he wrote this movie. It seems like a watered down version of what it should have been. And even though I liked some of the characters in this movie, there's a few characters that I did not like at all. First and foremost was the stoner character. I don't remember his name. I don't care what his name is. But he is one of those stoner characters and you have a really fine line in a movie like this with stoner characters. They're either going to be really funny, really entertaining, really goofy, and they're going to give you a lot of comedic relief, or they're going to be paranoid and annoying, and they're just going to be there just to have a druggie in the movie, and he was the latter. He was an aggravating character. Nothing he said was funny. He was just paranoid, screwing things up, and I just wanted him off the screen every single time he was on there. He did not have a single scene that I enjoyed where he was the forefront of it. The second character that I didn't really like was John Gallagher Jr.'s character, who is basically your main character in this movie. And he's the character who comes up and he's like, hey guys, what you're doing is morally objectable. We need to discuss all our options. Well, we, we understand, but we are not going to entertain the option of killing people. We, what do you got, a mouse in your pocket there, Melch? It does not matter what the circumstances are. We, we do not have the right to take innocent human lives. Yeah. And I understand in a story like this, you need a character to have kind of that moral compass to keep everybody in line, or at least to give the audience somebody to gravitate towards who's not a straight up villain or a straight up evil person in this movie. But he just seems like he tacks it on so much, he lays it on so thick, that his character is just badly written. 
He's not really somebody that you would walk into an office and say, yeah, he seems like somebody I would work with. He just seems like he's totally thrown in this just for the fact of having somebody with a moral compass, and it did not work for me. And the last character that I was really disappointed in, not because of the actor's portrayal, but because of the movie's serious misuse, is Michael Rooker. Why would you have Michael Rooker in a movie like this and not utilize him? He is barely in the movie. He's not used in the way that Michael Rooker needs to be used, where he's this creepy, vile, just off-the-wall humor character like he's been in other James Gunn movies like Slither and like his character in The Walking Dead he's kind of like a straight guy in this he comes in he says a few lines he doesn't say anything crazy he doesn't really do anything crazy he just gets under the screen and then gets off and I was like why was he even in this movie I want more Michael Rooker there's also a really big pacing issue in the Belko experiment even though this movie starts strong and it starts fast and doesn't waste any time getting you into this situation getting you into these characters and getting the story started there's a huge lull in the second act of this movie where people are just basically exploring different rooms and different areas of this Belco building trying to figure out a way to get out there's not really a whole lot of good humor or good interaction between characters there's no gore or carnage to keep you interested if you're a genre fan who most people who are seeing this movie is gonna be it's just kinda there to get you from point A to point C but point B bored the piss out of me. Luckily the third act does pick up when the carnage starts, when the game is on, when people are dying left and right, this movie turns into the Belko experiment that the trailers sell you that this movie is, and the genre fans who go to see this movie are gonna gravitate towards that last act of the movie, but even that last act, even though the pacing was a lot better, it didn't go as far as I wanted it to go with the gore or the carnage or the creativity with the kills. Most of the kills in this movie are done at a distance with a handgun and that's the least interesting and most boring way to take out people in a genre splatterfest film of this type. You want creativity, you want new kills, you want gore, you want carnage and this movie just gives you a half measure. You're going to hear that word a lot when I describe the Belko experiment is half measure. And even all the way to the very end of the movie, which I'm not going to spoil, but it has to do with a character change on a character that I was already not sold on. I already didn't care for him too much, and then whenever they have to make this big character change and come in and be the badass at the end of the last 10 minutes of this movie, I was like, no, you didn't sell me on that character from the beginning. You're not going to sell me on this big change and this big development of them now. If that ending came with a different character in that place, it would have been a lot better for me. Some people might not even have that problem if they care for that character. But just to me, it was an unsatisfying way to wrap up this story, and it was a sour note to kind of end the movie on, for me to walk out with that as my last thoughts of the Belko Experiment. So to wrap all this up, guys, the Belko Experiment is an innocent enough, enjoyable little genre film. It doesn't go quite as far as you want it to go. It doesn't overstay its welcome. There are some good acting. There are some good genre actors that you're going to recognize that we all know and love, and you're going to enjoy seeing them in this story. But the movie doesn't go near as far as it should have. It doesn't get near as creative or as bloody or as carnage-filled as the trailer promises and as James Gunn's writing usually entails and I think a lot of that at the end of the day is just because James Gunn himself didn't direct this movie so the Belko experiment ends up being the one word that I keep saying a half measure so if you like genre films of this nature if you like James Gunn's writing or if you just want to sit down and see a little bit of carnage for 88 minutes go ahead and pop in the Belko experiment but stay at home save a few bucks and check it out on Netflix so what do you guys think of the Belko Experiment? Did this movie deliver all the genre promises that it gave you in the trailers? Did it give you enough carnage? Did it give you enough creativity? Did you like all of the characters? Or did you have some issues with the characters here and there? Did you feel like the movie was a half measure and didn't deliver on everything that it should have? And James Gunn himself should have directed this and given a much better movie in the end. Put all of your thoughts on the Belko Experiment, James Gunn, or any of these great genre actors that we all know and love in the comment section below and we'll talk about it. Please like and share this video and hit that subscribe button. That way you get to come back and see me next time. But if that's not soon enough to check out some more of my videos, you can check out a few more by clicking right over here.